Hello, and welcome to 1851 Franchises 2024 Top Women in Franchising. Today, we are here with Tina from Big Frog. How are you, Tina? I'm doing great. How about you? Good, good. Um, to kick off, can you just tell me a little bit about your journey in franchising? So how did you start and then how'd you get to where you are now? Sure. Uh, it's kind of a roundabout journey, but I'll give you the, the gist of it. Um, uh, when I was really young, I decided I wanted to be in charge of my own destiny, as they say. Um, and my parents pushed me towards engineering law or medicine, and I decided I didn't like confrontation or blood. So I went towards engineering and I went ahead and got my PhD. I felt that getting my PhD would open up more doors for me towards management and career fulfillment. Uh, so from there, I did postdoc work, uh, focusing on chemical weapon detection in water, and then worked for a scientific instrumentation company. While that was super fulfilling, I really wanted to do my own thing. So I started a business with my partners in my mid-30s, and we ended up franchising. We didn't know what franchising was, but we said, why not? Let's give it a shot. Let's research it. Let's do it. Um, so that's how we ended up here. Um, but you know, along the way, I've had a lot of great mentors and leaders I've looked up to. My business partner was an amazing man. Um, he's since passed, but he was so grounded, kind, and had a wonderful sense of humor. And I thought, well, that's that's what I'd like to be as a leader. Uh, and then I've continued to evolve where uh, one of my current mentors is really focused more on the analytical side, which is definitely something that appeals to me as an ex-research scientist, uh, but showing me that that focus and analysis really helps you hit that end goal and the success you want. Um, but I do try to absorb everything from every type of person I admire and people I don't admire to make sure I don't turn into a person or leader that I don't want to be as well. Perfect. Um, how do you define success now in your current role? Um, so I look at it as being um, a CEO. I do feel that you really should focus on growing the value of your brand, um, in this case, Big Frog. And so what I look at is both expanding our system laterally and vertically. So we're always focused on driving profitability and ease of operations at the store level. And then of course, driving our overall EBITDA and value of the company. Um, what I find to be a very strong success trait is to be able to take feedback from the field, uh, listen, absorb it and use it in a good way. Um, sometimes it's stuff you don't want to hear. It's very harsh, mm -hmm. uh, but you really need to take that feedback and adapt the situation quickly and pivot. As you know, through COVID, all the franchise systems mm -hmm. really had to pivot, take advice from the field and move forward. Um, and, you know, owning a business is super complicated. So my goal is to make it easy and fun and get that work-life balance we all need in the system or in our lives. Yeah, absolutely. Um, kind of through your journey, what are some of the unique challenges and maybe also some of the unique opportunities that you see that kind of face women specifically in the franchise industry? Well, I think that's a twofold question because one, we're women executives in franchising. And then where I was as well was owning your own business as a woman. I think um, in terms of um, women executives in franchising, there's still a huge C-suite discrepancy, whether you're in Fortune 500 or franchising. Um, I do think there's still some prejudice that exists towards women uh, in general as being an executive uh, due to perceived constraints on their time because of familial obligations. I know I've run into as a younger woman not being hired or women I shouldn't say that, but but women that just it's viewed upon as, oh, if you're going to have a child, maybe we don't want you. We want someone older. Uh, so there's just there's still some prejudice that exists out there, a lot less, frankly, than there used to be. Very fortunate to see this, this shift. Um, but in terms of being a an executive woman in franchising, I think there's a great opportunity. I think a lot of franchisors have embraced it. Uh, women are business owners and make excellent franchisees. And having women on your franchising team is essential to building that trust with your system. 
uh, and your women franchisees. So women have insight and bring strengths to situations and challenges. Uh, when they coach or chat with their franchisees, it won't come off as quote unquote mansplaining. So I think there's a lot of advantage there. Um, I've had a male coach on my team years ago that just couldn't figure out how not to sound condescending to women owners. Um, and he's gone off to do bigger and better things, which is great. But uh, so there's, so I think that's really important. Um, and the other thing I love about franchising is the IFA completely recon or the International Franchise Association completely recognizes the value uh, diversity brings to any system. So they have a great local women's franchise network that you can participate in, learn about and network with other women, uh, which is great for your professional career. Yeah. And then of course, as far as business ownership, as a woman, there's unique challenges too, because it can be more difficult to get funding, either SBA or private funding. A good percentage still goes to male entrepreneurs. However, if you want to own a business, jumping into franchising gives you such a leg up. Um, the franchisor can help you get that funding, explain funding options, um, and they're there to help. That's why you pay royalties. So you're not at a disadvantage due to gender or any other type of diversity. Okay, perfect. Um, from that, I have kind of two tangential questions. Mm -hmm. On the franchisor side, beyond just inclusion, are there any other tips or any advice you would have for someone who's looking to empower or better include women in their system? Um, yeah, so I think that uh, being uh, participating in the IFA's diversity fan program, which we've done since I think we were five years old, uh, and it's now rebranded as the Diversity Institute, is wonderful. Um, I love the idea of giving, a, like I said before, a leg up to women joining a franchise system and minorities as well. Um, I would, if I were a franchisor, which I am, recommend you go ahead and joining that program. Um, and as a side uh, note, just the vet fan program is great too. And again, I, I really think that we should hire women in your organization. Uh, it's just so important. It gives you an opportunity to support women franchisees uh, there's just a, it's just a different mindset. Uh, I also strongly recommend making sure your, your advisory council, if you have one, incorporates some of your women owners and you always include women in your subcommittees. It's just women just bring unique challenges, I mean, unique experiences, and it's a great idea. We also create peer groups with women owners and managers just so that they have, um, can talk about those challenges. Uh, women, are often still the primary caregivers to their children or aging parents. And so there's a lot they have on their plate during the day and getting support and advice from other women is really impactful. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess just be alert. What I do for, or what we try to do for our franchisees is we try to be aware of special grants and opportunities and programs for women in their areas and give them a heads up so they can apply and join them and really uh, develop their leadership. Yeah, perfect. And then for the franchisees, is there any other advice you would give to a woman looking to either break into the industry or grow in the industry? Uh, again, I think continued education is super impactful and looking for uh, people, even on a, you know, in LinkedIn, look for local networking. There's so many uh, women specific networking groups. That's fantastic. Um, you know, again, as being part of a franchise system, you have us to really help you uh, get further educated and develop your leadership skills. Um, but I do think that it's really a community based effort. Um, so I think look for people in your community and local mentors and uh, ask around. People are actually, especially in franchising, are super giving with their time. Mm -hmm. And find someone that you admire, someone in your network, and just ask them to have coffee now and then. I think that would really go a long way to help you excel. Yeah, wonderful. That is everything I had for you. Is there anything else you think our audience should know? You know, I, I really think continued education and mentorship is critical. Every time I have a conversation with a new mentor or someone I admire, I learn just a little nugget that I apply immediately to how I'm planning, how I'm uh, strategizing. And I think that is so, so important. Um, 
and really incorporating all types of people in your organization, whether they're franchisees or in your team, is really brings a lot to your life experience and can just be a lot of fun. So that's that's what I would say. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much, Tina. It was great talking to you. Thank you.